All right. So this is going to be a different change of pace. So um, I'm Cheryl Jekyll, and I'm here to talk to you about taking notes isn't lean. And uh, this is about my journey as a lean practitioner. I've been doing lean about 30 years, and um, I'm a grateful recovering paper addict, so I wanted to share my journey with you a little bit. So my way of listening is taking notes. So I like to write, write them out. Um, I, it's just always been my preference. I love number two pencils. I have a whole container and I have number two pencils and I have lots of white pads. I get the best quality of paper. I like lots of paper and lots of pencils. But here's the problem. Here's why it's not lean. A given Sunday in my house is truly sitting down on the floor with notes from every meeting I've had that week. So I move around between clients and other conversations. Sometimes if I've been in a meeting and then I sit down and I'm on the phone, I'm taking notes on top of other notes. And so on Sundays, I sit down and I pull all the paper apart and I try and figure out where everything is and try and put it to bed. And it takes about three hours, two to three hours a week when this first came to my attention. Three hours a week times 52 weeks is 156 hours, which is close to four full-time weeks of work. I spend rewriting notes from writing them down. So I happened to be on a plane a ways back. I was on my way to Orlando, and I got on my plane with my usual, it's like a briefcase about this big, and it has my clothes and my cosmetics and all the paper. And this is a two-day trip. And I can't lift it. And this very nice gentleman said, can I help you with that? So we're in first class, and he hoists it up there, and we sit down in our nice seats. And we start to talk. And he's in the auto industry. And he says, so what do you do? And I'm like, I'm in lean. And he goes, I'm in lean. And then he goes, so what's up with the briefcase? Like, that's a lot of waste. <laughs> and then he ever so nicely shows me his really cute little briefcase that he's gone for two weeks with a couple shirts and shave and, and no paper. So then he tells me to take a piece of paper and he shows me how on just one piece of paper, half of the fields on it don't need to be there. And so I get to Orlando, I literally dump the briefcase. I literally threw it out. I got rid of most of the paper. I bought this very sleek little silver thing from Brookstone. I was so pleased with myself and it's back on the paper in no time. I just quickly just, I just, I put the paper in the silver one and then I took another uh, maroon one, and I put it on top of the silver one to put the things in there so I can still have my paper. So um, just, I guess, wasn't my time yet. So what became clear to me is it's not just whether or not I can actually give it all up at any one shot. I'm actually, I think, addicted to paper. So I started to decide to reach out for help. And in the same time, I happened to sit down on a plane and I was sitting next to a woman named Mary Tui, who I worked with for 10 years. And we hadn't seen each other in several, and she plops down next to me. And of course, I'm sitting there with my usual fluster of papers and files and folders and all the notes from the day. And she sits down with a very nice little purse and her little cute little iPad with this little handy dandy keypad on it. And so she looks at me after a glass of wine, and she says, hmm, what's going on with the paper? And I'm like, Okay, so she explained to me how every conversation she's ever had, she types it up, she puts it in the iPad, in the nice, neat little folder that it goes. So I left, I went home to Best Buy, I bought one of those little keypads and one of those little iPads, and it lasted, I didn't think it lasted a day. Um, I quickly found I just feel anxious when I don't have paper and pen. I just, I literally, I just feel anxious. So I wrote a blog. So I wrote out to the community, the lean community, not just any blog, I wrote to the lean community and shared my plight. And I got back 1,200 responses from everywhere. They wrote me from Germany, Italy, Denmark, all over the United States, and I mean letters, long letters, telling me how they've overcome this addiction to paper and taking notes the long, hard way. So I'm not the only one that wants to spend a few hours a week redoing all my notes from the week. And so they were all sharing with me which application. 
So they you know, use this application and you just have to buy this application and bring this one on your phone and this one on your iPad and this one on your computer and you'll get rid of all these notes. The most popular one, just so you all know, it's the OneNote. That's what many, probably out of 1,200 people, about 100 of them think this is the best answer. So then I'm back sitting on a plane again. I travel a fair amount. So I'm on this plane and we're sitting there and the guy two, to, two seats down, he's on one of these big iPads, these big honking things, they're new. And uh, this size, it's like the size of a piece of paper and he's got this little white pen, it's from Apple or something. And he's writing on it. So first of all, he's just watching a movie. I was the most impressed with just the big screen with the movie. Then he gets done with that, pulls out his little white pen and he's writing his notes from the day. I'm like, oh, I just need a bigger iPad. So sure enough that weekend, I go back out to Walmart, I buy myself a brand new one of the big hunkin' things and those $100 pens, which I used it for a minute. And I quickly found I don't like to write on a, on a surface like that. It's not, it's not like those number two pencils on a legal pad. So it was interesting to me out of the 1,200 people that responded to this blog, only one of them contacted me on the side. He sent, he's a friend and he wrote me a note. He said, I just want to talk to you about this situation. He goes, I'm just going to tell you why I still use paper. But he didn't want to say this to everybody. He just wanted to tell me privately. So I get on the phone with him and he says, I don't think it's a good way to listen when you're using technology instead of listening. He goes, I write notes so I can listen better. And I thought, that's what it is. I'm not addicted to paper because I don't care. I'm addicted to paper because it's how I listen to people. So if I'm in a meeting with you and I write things down, it's to make eye contact with you when we talk. So I'm like, I get it. I have a good reason to use paper. I don't want to be looking down when people talk to me because what I'd already seen when I walk into meetings with my little keypads, I'm busy typing, which doesn't make me feel like I'm really listening to people. So ever so happily, I go back to paper. Get rid of these iPads, they're all sitting on my desk. If anybody would like an iPad, just let me know because I have big ones and small ones and when they come with pens and little keypad things. So I went back to paper and then I'm so happy from that but it starts to multiply. Because I go with the white pads and then I start to have different notebooks for different people and then I have red pads and gling pads and yellow pads and yellow. It's not even uncommon if I come to your office, if I don't have a legal pad, I'll go, does anybody have a pad of paper? And everybody has one. So then I get my pen and my fresh pad of paper. But it's gotten this big again. I've got more paper than I know what to do with. And that's making me really unhappy. So here's why. It's heavy to lift it. It's still taking me, yes, yesterday, I spent a couple of hours just coming through last week's notes to try and figure out what's going on. And it makes me really disorganized. So what am I actually really addicted to? I think I'm actually addicted to being disorganized. <laughs> Some part of me just doesn't really wanna be organized. And I like to just have things going every which way but, but loose. And um, you know, I just, I can tell the more I watch me do that, that it's, uh, you know, it's just my habit. So what do we know about lean? It's about the PDCA and it's about continuous improvement. So I had to ask myself, what's gotten better? I do have less paper than I used to. Coming here, I had about this much paper and a computer. So I know that it's getting better. It's a continuous process of improvement. There's still a lot more paper than there needs to be. And in the end, it's a journey. And so I'm about to go on the wagon again. So I made a plan, I am gonna have, I have a D-Day in mind, and I'm gonna cut the paper again, and I'm gonna try and go back on a purely technolo technology system, but I'm gonna try and find a way that I can write the notes and scan them into the computer. I've decided that's the hybrid between the two. Write, and then scan them and put them in the file folders, and then I have to get rid of them within the day. So that's the plan, so I'm going on the wagon in about a week. So that's my journey. And during the summit, I'll be um, enjoying um, anybody who wants to share with me your comments. I'm sure you can join the 1,200 people who have an opinion about all this. <laughs> Thanks.